Cook, Love, Eat with Sarab, a vegetarian show. Title sponsor, Mustafa Center Singapore. Hi guys, my name is Sunny and I'm a fitness freak. About three years ago, I started exercising quite seriously and I lost about 25 kilograms. One of the most important things about losing weight is controlling your diet. Ever since I was a kid, I would eat Auntie Sarab's fabulous food and today I've come back to her to ask her for some ideas about nutrition, meals which are high in protein and low in carbohydrates. At the end of the day, I hope to eat healthy, eat great food, but also maintain my figure as well. I hope she can help me. Sunny, I can't believe it. You've grown so big, man. And I'm having you on my show today. I'm really honored to be here. Um, I never thought that since you were cooking for me as a child that today I'd be on your show and you'd be cooking for me again. I'm really excited to be here. Yeah, it's that same Sunny who was born just the other day with that perfect haircut. Not this one though. I hope you don't mind this haircut though. I hope you like this one more than the previous one. You're looking cool, you're looking good. Thank you, Auntie, thank you. It's great to be here and, I, and I'm looking forward to seeing what uh, you're gonna cook for me today. It's not going to be your other favorites that you had. Yeah, I, I miss that a lot. The kima alu, the dal, the bindi, the rice. I used to love eating that, but uh, health is important now. Uh, I'm trying to manage my weight and I uh, have come to you to see what kind of ideas you have for healthy eating but which also is tasty at the same time. Wow, it's going to be very interesting and I'm really touched also. I'm going to be doing this show with that little baby I had and can never forget when we were not allowed to enter the room without, with our shoes on. Your dadima had really sterilized the room. She was like the policeman outside my door. Yeah, uh, yeah. So. And can't imagine today we have this tall handsome boy here who's so health conscious was stuffed with parontes all his childhood. Yeah, absolutely. And now he's on a no-carb diet. Well, I'm trying to maintain it as best as possible. I, uh, I do still enjoy your cooking and I will be coming over for some dal rice and bindi. But today, absolutely, health is very important and I'd like to see what you can do for me to help my diet. We're going to try and be as healthy as possible today. Okay. We'll start with the oatmeal banana smoothie. Okay, sounds great. For this, we have oats. Now you know oats is good for everything on earth. Good for diabetes, heart diseases, cholesterol, for losing weight. And I think the youngsters would love to hear this, that it's good for hangovers also. Okay, okay. Yeah. That's very important for us, especially. Yeah, so that's one thing. And then we blend it with a banana and some strawberries. You can use any fruits you like. So, Auntie, can you tell me what made you choose bananas and strawberries? Is there a specific reason for it? Strawberries are great antioxidants and they go well with any fruit actually. Okay. So you can blend it with any other fruit they, okay. and they somehow go very well with smooth. So I can have a different flavor every day? Yeah. Alright, great. And then banana gives a creamy texture to the smoothie. Okay. And it's of course rich in potassium and also keeps you full. It's a lot of fiber. Okay. So it keeps you full for okay. a longer period of time. And then you've got some yogurt, plain yogurt. You've got some milk. We've got honey to give that little sweet taste. Sure. I'm going to eat a banana. I hope you don't mind while you make it. For some reason, whenever I'm around you, I get hungry. <laughs> I think that must be something since I was a child. Something to do with the past. Definitely food connected. So one of the great things about making a smoothie is that I have no knowledge of a kitchen. I have no knowledge of how to use anything. I don't have to bake. It's just slicing the fruit up, preparing the ingredients and putting it all together. Together, yeah. This recipe is just a flash actually. Okay. It, that's one of my favorite recipes because 
you have most of these things and they're so easily available. Absolutely. The beauty of adding oats in the smoothie is it takes care of every aspect. You don't need to dress your smoothie up with 15 ingredients like different seeds or protein powders. Oats does it all. Okay. So and, and oats can be bought at any supermarket, any, any grocery store? Yeah. Right now I'm using this instant oats. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we've got oats here. We've got yogurt. You can use vanilla flavored yogurt if you like. Skim milk. And a little bit of honey which adds the right amount of sweetness. And honey is a natural product, so no preservatives, no fats. So it's the healthiest option. Yeah, it's good for you. Gonna try blending this together? I'd you love to. For the bananas, you've got this creamy texture. Strawberries give it a little bit of a taste so that you don't get the oats taste in it. Alright. Cheers. Wow. It's really, really good, Auntie. Yeah. It tastes like a strawberry milkshake, essentially, but a healthier version. It's good for you too. Oats increase your metabolism. So if you have something like this, say quarter cup of oats, which we've added in a glass of smoothie, 45 minutes to one hour before your exercise, it really boosts your energy. Okay, well I can't even taste the oats in it. That's the best part about it. So this is breakfast covered, Auntie. Um, because I exercise a lot, I do get hungry and I need a substantial meal for lunch. So I was wondering what you have as a lunch option, which is healthy. Today we'll do quinoa salad. Today quinoa is an in thing globally. So far it was a staple food only in South America. So we'll do a quinoa salad. Okay, fantastic. I look forward to trying it. For fruity oats smoothie, one banana, three to four strawberries, two teaspoon honey, one fourth cup oats, half cup milk, half cup plain yogurt. Blend all ingredients together adding crushed ice. and curries, vegetarian and non-vegetarian cuisine. Rooftop Mustafa Center. Wow, Auntie, it looks like there's so many ingredients. It's not actually that many ingredients here, it's just the display. Okay, so how do we get started? We're going to start by cooking this quinoa seeds. Okay. Actually, quinoa is used as a grain, but technically it's not a grain, they're seeds. Okay. So what we're going to do is cook this with some stock. You can use up all your extra vegetables in the fridge. Okay. Clear up the fridge, make some fresh stock, which is the ideal thing to do. Sure. But of course, if you're in a hurry today, you can get a lot of organic stock cubes. Okay. I would go for a mushroom stock cube. And those can be bought again at any, any grocery any store area. or supermarket. Yeah. yeah. So what we'll do is, we'll put this stock to boil. Why did you choose quinoa? I mean, anything else can be used, so why specifically quinoa? It's easy to cook than any other grain. It'll take us 10 minutes if we cover and cook on medium fire just now. Oh, just 10 minutes? Just 10 minutes. Okay. And quinoa is known for all its uh, nutritional value. Okay. It's got... High in protein? Yeah, it is high in protein because it's got the essential nine amino acids in it. 
which makes it a complete protein. Okay. And uh, let me just throw in some sun-dried sure. tomatoes. Love sun-dried tomatoes. Yeah, this gives a little taste to it. And some mushrooms. These are shiitake mushrooms, the dried shiitake mushrooms, which were soaked in water. So they, you see them, they swell up and they're easy to cut and they'll get cooked easily. We throw in a little bit of salt, some black pepper. You can add this later too. Okay. I'll add some more later. Now we're going to let this cook for a good 10, 12 minutes. You'll see it, it kind of swells up. It becomes a little transparent. All right. So uh, I pretty much just have to leave it to rest and just let it boil. Yeah, just let okay. it boil. Wow, that's very simple. Yeah. The underlying principle behind a, having a low carb diet is actually to cut down your fats, cut down your calorie intake. So that's where quinoa is helpful okay. because it's very rich in dietary fiber okay. that adds bulk and keeps your stomach full. Okay. And so there's lower calorie intake. Okay. Well, one thing I've, I've, I struggle with is I'm, I'm low on energy most of the time because of no carbs in my diet. Does this have a lot of energy in it? Yes. And especially if you add in your vegetables. Okay. Now, like we've got our peppers, we've got feta cheese, we've got tomatoes, capers, olives. You add in whatever you feel like, once it's cooked, you mix sure. in and make it a complete nutritional meal. Okay. Younger generation, they like to go on a no-carb or a low-carb diet, but it's not a balanced diet, so it doesn't last too long. Sure. You just lose, you shed weight very quickly, you lose water, sure. but then very soon it affects your health and you're back to your... Well, that's exactly what I went through as well, and I was hungry a lot of the time, and then I, I would start snacking, and I didn't have energy or, or a motivation to do anything just because I was just void of, of food, basically. Yeah. So, ditching it and not eating carbs wasn't exactly the ideal solution. When you're low on energy, you have to understand that there's something missing in your diet. It has to be balanced. Now, this is full, full of goodness salad. Okay. Because it's got vitamins, it's got proteins, it's got all the minerals. So you've got everything your body needs. Okay, great. Now the quinoa is done. You can see all the stalk is evaporated okay. and the seeds are cooked. It smells amazing. I'll throw in the peppers while it's hot. I just want the peppers to be slightly cooked. Sure. They can remain crunchy. But if we just if we add it when they when it's cold, they'll be a bit too raw. Okay. After you boil the ingredients, I can add whatever vegetables I like, and I can take out whatever I don't like, okay. basically, yes. right? Okay. So now we'll wait for it to cool to add the rest of the ingredients. Okay. In the meanwhile, I'm going to mix the dressing. For the dressing, I've got some minced garlic, some olive oil. I'm using olive oil here. But what you could do, many times what I do is you, you get this oil from the sun-dried tomatoes. Okay. You could use that instead, it adds a lot of flavor to it. Some lemon rind and we've got some lemon juice. I'll mix in all this. Take this out in a bowl. I'm adding some white chopped onions. Okay. Red would be a bit too strong, I would use white. Capers if you like, okay. capers. Some olives, feta cheese, a little bit of dairy. So cheese is up to the individuals liking whatever they prefer? Whatever. Okay. Some cherry tomatoes for taste and color. And to half them. Our dressing, which we just made. Mix it well. It's extremely yeah. colorful. Yeah, at this stage you can add a little more black pepper. We did in the beginning. Okay. But I think we need a little more would be nice. How would we describe the taste of quinoa to the viewers at home? Because I'm sure a lot of them are not really familiar with this ingredient. Yeah. Quinoa's got kind of a nutty taste. Okay. But by, after we've cooked it in stock, we've added the dressing. We've kind of given it a very lemony taste. Okay. Uh, just the tangy, lemony taste to okay. it. And what about for people with, with allergies or with specific types of dietary requirements? Does, it, does this fit the bill for them? Sure. 
it's gluten free. Okay. So okay. It's suitable for uh, people with allergies, and also it's cholesterol free. Okay. So top it up with some chopped spring onions. Auntie, it looks great. I'm famished, and I'd love to try it. Here you go. Thank you. This can be eaten any time of the day. It's awesome. It's awesome. So, Auntie, your quinoa salad was fantastic. I'm really excited to see what you have in store for me for dinner. I hope you don't mind, but I'm still going to eat this. Sure. Next is your favorite dish, satay. Oh, wow. Okay. This recipe is specially made for you, a vegetarian alternative for satay. Okay. I know you loved it as a child. Absolutely. You loved it with nasi goreng. Today, you've got quinoa salad and satay instead of nasi goreng. Okay. For quinoa salad, one and a half cups quinoa, three to four cups stock, two to three dried mushrooms soaked in water, two tablespoons sun-dried tomatoes, salt and black pepper. Cover and cook quinoa with the above ingredients for 15 to 20 minutes on medium flame. Cool and add one cup green and red peppers, half cup white onion chopped, one fourth cup feta cheese cubed, one fourth cup spring onions chopped, 2 tablespoons capers, 3 to 4 olives sliced, 5 to 6 cherry tomatoes halved. For dressing, 2 tablespoon olive oil, 2 cloves garlic minced, 1 tablespoon lemon juice, 1 teaspoon lemon rind. Mix all the salad ingredients together and serve. Here are all the ingredients for satay. Okay. Don't get afraid. They're all kept in groups for you to understand. Okay. This is ingredients A, B, C. I'll explain it to you. Okay. Now first we'll make the satay sauce. Okay, let me tell you first before we begin. You're going to make note of these ingredients. Okay. Because one of these days I want you to make satays and I'm coming over to have. Wow. Okay, you've put me under the test, Auntie, but I think I can do a decent job. Sure, I'm no, I know you can. If not, I'll get somebody else to help me. <laughs> Who's that? I don't know. I'll find someone. <laughs> okay, we'll start with making the peanut sauce. Okay. You need roasted peanuts. Okay. Here we've got roasted peanuts. I've just roasted them on a pan. And you pound them coarsely. Okay. You can do that in a blender. Okay. Just don't make it too much of a powder. We don't want it very pasty. Okay. We want a little coarse in texture. All right. And then we've got chilies and garlic. Okay. Which are blended together. We've got palm sugar, tamarind pulp, soya sauce. Okay. We're going to mix all these ingredients together to make a peanut sauce. So, Auntie, it looks like the sauce is the most important part of the dish because it seems that the satay is very easy to prepare. That's right, yeah. The main thing is the sauce. For this mock satay, what we're going to do is we're going to marinate the mock meat in the satay sauce. Okay. So, okay. we want the flavors of the sauce to seep in the Mock. All right, but then we will have it as a dipping sauce on the side On as the well. side, yeah. Okay. So we've got our roasted pounded peanuts. We've got our chilies and garlic blended here. We're going to add in the palm sugar. All right. Tamarind pulp. So this is tamarind soaked and you take out the pulp. Some soya sauce, dark soya sauce. So we mix this together. I'll throw in a little bit of salt. Yeah. Just mix it well. Actually, what you can do is at this stage, this sauce can be freezed. Okay. It's the same sauce for gado gado. Okay, great. Yeah. Gado gado is another one of my favorites. Yeah. So what you can do is do this, put it in the freezer. When you need to use, just add in a little water and mix in your vegetables for gado gado or have it as a satay sauce. And if I made this, how long would it, how long could I keep it for? If you store it well in a tight container, it can last forever. Okay. Minimum six months, no okay. problem. Well, okay. Well, I eat a lot more than that, so within a week it'll probably be all gone. Yeah, sauce is mixed. See, it's well blended now. We can add in water as we need. So part A of our recipe is done. So now we go to the second part of our recipe. Okay. For which we have this mock chicken. Okay. Now mock meats are a good alternative for meats. Okay. For non-vegetarian. This is made out of soya bean. The good part of this is that it's 
cholesterol free. All right. So what we're going to do is we need to marinate this with a little bit of peanut sauce, some lime juice, sweet soy sauce, ginger, and some red bell pepper. Okay. We're going to grind red bell pepper, ginger, and then we're going to marinate this whole sure. thing. And then how long is it kept for when it's marinated? Marinated, I would prefer four to five hours. Okay. Actually, best is if you can marinate it overnight. Okay, and you, so you just marinate it and put it in the fridge? Fresh, yeah. All right. We put in our bell peppers, ginger, some soy sauce, and some lime juice. A couple of tablespoons of the ready peanut sauce. Okay, now we blend it. It's a nice smooth paste. So we'll marinate this so-called mock chicken. You can use tempeh also. Okay. You like tempeh? Yes, yes, I do. Yeah. So now what we'll do is we'll leave this to marinate for a few hours. Okay. And then we're going to saute it in the pan. Okay. And skewer it. Then if you feel you want to barbecue it, if it's for a barbecue party, just do it on the barbecue to get that smoky flavor. Okay. And serve it with peanut sauce. Perfect. Sounds great. The second step is done. So we move on to the third step now. Okay. For this, what we are going to do is heat up some oil. I like to use olive oil. You can use any cooking oil. Sure. And what we are going to do is just saute this for a few minutes, not too long. You don't need to do it too long. We just want the flavors to infuse in. You need to do this only for a couple of minutes. Okay. We'll switch this off. When it's cool enough to handle, we're going to skewer them. Okay. So we'll wait for it to cool a bit. I think now they're cool enough to handle. Okay. So we're going to use these satay sticks to skewer. Alright. Now if you're going to barbecue on a regular barbecue pit, make sure these sticks are soaked in water for 10 minutes. Okay. Otherwise, they tend to break when you sure. barbecue. I think for this size, three pieces in a stick should be enough. Now these are done. You can see they're all neatly squared. What we're going to do, we're going to grill it on the tabletop grill. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to put that on eight here. We're just going to barbecue them on this. Okay, but because they're ready for consumption once they're out of the pan. Cooked. Yes. Okay. But if you want that satay flavor sure. and look. Okay. You do this. Put it on the grill. Yeah. All right. They look mushy like this. Okay. So it's nice to have them a little charred grilled look. All right. So if this is heated up, actually at this point, if you like, you can baste it with some ketchup mayonnaise, the okay. Indonesian sweet sauce. Okay. If you like One that of my little favorites. Most, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. You just baste it with that. All right. And a little bit of oil while grilling. Honey, you remember when we used to travel on go on our holidays when you guys were young? Yeah, absolutely. Wherever we landed, we used to look for our dal chawal and typical Indonesian food. And we carried sambal all the way with us. Yeah, I remember mom, we would always pack it and make sure that she brought it with us. Yeah. But that's because as kids, that's all we wanted to eat. We never wanted to eat anything else. I'm sure you must be missing all this food. I do, I do. I love satay. It's probably one of my favorite foods. Yeah. I'm glad I get to eat it again today. Want to try? It's ready yeah, now. I'd love so, to. Just be careful, it's a bit hot. Sure. And here's the sauce if you want to dip it. Nancy, it's really good. For satay, 500 grams mock chicken, 1 inch ginger, 1 teaspoon soya sauce, 1 red bell pepper, 3 tablespoon peanut sauce, 2 tablespoon lemon juice, 2 tablespoon oil. Blend all the ingredients except mock and oil. Marinate mock in the blended ingredients and leave for 4 to 5 hours. Heat oil and cook the marinated mixture for a few minutes. Cool and skewer 4 to 5 pieces on satay sticks. 
grill and serve with peanut sauce. For peanut sauce, 150 grams peanuts roasted and ground coarsely, 4 to 5 fresh red chilies, 3 cloves garlic, 2 tablespoon palm sugar, 1 to 2 tablespoon dark soya sauce, 1 to 2 tablespoon tamarind pulp, salt to taste, pound chilies and garlic, add peanuts, palm sugar, tamarind pulp, soya sauce and salt. Add a little water to get sauce-like consistency. So Auntie, as great as all the food has been today, there's still something missing. What is it? When I was a kid, you would always say this line, every time you served us a meal, there would always be this line that you would say, which would make the meal complete. Oh, that one. When food is cooked with love, served with love, eaten with love, it not only nourishes your body, but also your soul. And now I'm going to eat with love. Thank you for having me today. I have to say that everything was delicious. And the most important thing was that you've now given me different options for whenever I get hungry in the morning or for lunch or for dinner. They're healthier options. And I'm, I'm extremely happy that they are so very easy to cook. And uh, I hope you're going to be coming over tomorrow to try my satay. Great. All right. That's why I taught you I have someone to cook for me now. Thank you, Auntie. Yes. Thank you so much. My father was a very hardcore meat eater. Kabhi unhone humko encourage nahi kiya ki non veg ke alawa bhi kuch khaya ja sakta. And towards the later years of his life, the kidneys not able to process all the protein, so he had to switch to vegetables, which he never admitted was a good idea. Cook, love, eat with Sarah, a vegetarian cooking show. Title sponsor: Mustafa Center Singapore. Co-sponsor: Kebabs and Curries, Rooftop Mustafa Center, and Handi Restaurant. Midnight dining at its best.